Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the most popular text functions in Excel. The text functions that I'm going to demonstrate in this lesson fall into three categories. Text functions that transform or change the case. We use the upper function, the lower function, and the proper function. Text functions that join together two or more text strings. The concatenate function or the ampersand. The ampersand is Excel's operator to join together text strings. The third category, text functions that clean up text. The len or the length function counts the actual number of characters including spaces in a text string. The trim function to remove those extra spaces and the clean function to remove some ugly non-printing characters that sometimes come along when we download information. All right, let's take a look over here at how we can use upper, proper, and lower. We've downloaded a report from a mainframe computer. The information is accurate, but it's also ugly. All of the text is in uppercase, so we want to use the proper function, equals proper, and we see that there is a single argument in there. So we just point to the cell whose case we want to change into proper case. Now proper case means that the initial letter of each word in the text string gets capitalized. And that's fine, but we need to be on the lookout. For example, over here, notice that I have Alexander of Troy. Well, the capital for Alexander is great, the capitalization for Troy is great, but Excel would have no way of knowing that of is a preposition, and I wanted the O not to be capitalized. I want to keep that in lowercase. So that's one anomaly that you're going to be on the lookout for. Another one is after I copy this down, when we come over here and take a look at a client Michael McDonald, again, there's no space between the C and the D. So there's no way for Excel to say, oh, I should capitalize that D. So be on the lookout there for those two uh, little, little gotchas. But proper will get you 99.5% towards your completed goal. And lower, just like proper or upper, requires a single argument equals lower and we point to the cell whose case we want to transform. Click OK, and there we go. Now, before I leave this section, one other gotcha, and this happens frequently. People will say, ha ha, I have the information exactly the way I want. I have it in proper case. I can now come through and get rid of that initial garbage report that I got. Uh-oh. Now, before you reach for the phone to call the paramedics or reach for the phone to call the IT department, just take a breath and remember that we have the undo command or the keyboard shortcut, control Z. So it restores what we just undid. Now, we remember we're still working with functions or formulas and cell references. So before we can delete this information, what we need to do is select it use control C to copy it and then right mouse click and say not paste but paste special and what we want to do is we want to paste this as values in other words we're transforming the formulas into constant values now we can click escape so we have constant values in there now we can go through if we wish and delete those initial um, uh, cells over there all right, now let's move into the next category. Our manager said, uh, it's great that we have first name and last name as separate fields, but I want to report where I have them joined together as the full name. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. First, by using the ampersand, the operator to join together text strings, and then using the concatenate function. So we'll do the equal sign to begin our formula, point to the cell that contains the first name, then we'll use the ampersand. Now the first gotcha is, let's think about this, we want to include a space between the first name and the last name. So after the ampersand, double quotation mark, space bar, double quotation mark. The second gotcha is, remember, that was one text string that we joined. We're joining together another text string, which will be the last name. So use an ampersand before you point to the cell that contains the last name. So you use two ampersands in this case, one after the first name and before the space that we want to include inside double quotation marks. 
then another ampersand, and then point to the cell with the last name. And it's easy to just copy this down, and we have that report for the manager. Now I'm going to do something similar with the concatenate function. This time I'm going to have last name followed by a comma and a space and then the first name. So equals concatenate and boy am I so thankful for function autocomplete introduced in Excel 2007. I can't tell you how many times I misspelled concatenate. I'll use control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. So in this case remember we want the last name as text number one. For text number two inside double quotation marks I want a comma, a space, and then remember double quotation marks. And finally for text number three that'll be the first name. Click OK. So there whether you use the concatenate function or use the ampersand to join text together, that's a great way to save yourself a lot of time. And once again, we'll just copy this down. All right, now let's move on to our third category, extra spaces. Well, something doesn't look right with this information that we've downloaded. We come up here into the formula bar and it's really easy to see that we've got a lot of extra spaces put in there. It's not perhaps as easy to see that we have padding with spaces added at the end. If you use the F2, the Function 2 keyboard shortcut, you can see because F2 takes you to the last character in a cell that we have padding here at the end. Fortunately, we can use the trim function to remove that extra padding. Equals trim, and it requires a single argument. We'll point to the cell to remove all the spaces from a text string except for a single space between the words. And there we go. Now I'm going to do a before and an after test. I used over here the len or the length function to count the number of characters including spaces in a text string. Now let's see after we put our uh, text using the trim function on a diet, let's see how many characters we stripped away from there. So equals len and again let's bring up the function arguments dialog box. So it will return the number of characters in a string. Let's point to the cell that we trimmed away the fat for. So you see before we use the trim function we had 22 characters in that check string. Now after removing the excess spaces we only have 13. Again copy that down. Alright, our final function will be the clean function. Now again, this sometimes uh, happens when we get a report that's downloaded. We get these ugly non-printing characters and we certainly need to remove them. So fortunately it's easy to do. We use the clean function. Not clear, but clean. Think of Mr. Clean, the detergent. So equals clean and let's bring up function arguments dialog box. Again, a single argument over here. So I want to remove those non-printable characters. Click OK and there you go. Copy it down. So there you've seen how to use the most popular text functions. Text functions that will transform or change the case, join together text, or clean up text. And I offer these tips on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007, and I'll look for you in the next lesson.